Yeah, so we're off to Fort George. We decided to go to Fort George. We haven't been there for a little while. Well, actually, we have about three years ago, wasn't it? About three, yeah. I don't think we ever filmed off for YouTube, anyway. Well, I think we included it in um, that Throwback Thursday from Scotland 2016. Oh, right, yeah. When we were Still attempting to Sony. film with that Sony camera. Yeah. And we took, we took mainly photos then. So I think that's the last time we went there. Yeah. So. You can imagine being stationed here in the dead of winter. Yep. Right at the very tip, isn't it? Yeah. It's very easy to find that as well with Mrs. Satnag. Yeah. Again, I just used the search and I started to go put Fort in, space G, and it yeah. came up Fort George. Yeah. It's quick, isn't it? I think yeah. That's Satnag, the search it? thing is very good. Yeah. But before, one in the car, um, we've had to put the town in, then what type of thing it is, and for this, it's just so easy. Yeah. Disabled ones, isn't it? No, I meant the other back. The other back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the front then. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking of, yeah, never mind. <laughs> right. Pop is all, all set. Not the best weather, is it? <laughs> Not like a steady drizzle, really. Yeah. It is an impressive place, isn't it? It is. Imagine trying to assault this coming down here. You just have a load of red coats sitting there with the muskets, wouldn't you? Maybe we would, yeah. Yeah. Some can in between us. That's what they say when they're running out of ammunition, isn't it? We've got one cannon between us. <laughs> and then you've got to come down here. All the time there'd be people with cannons up there shooting down at you. Yeah, that's right. I think at the time they built this, they perfected castles really, hadn't they? They had, yeah. Because yeah. you've got like a moat here, haven't you? Yeah. Big moat either side. Just wiping the lens. And that side as well. We've come in at the far end, haven't we? So this is the main approach to the fort. We originally had two drawbridges, one in front of the main entrance and at the far end the second three spans from the Ravelin. The latter was reconstructed in 1980, taking the mask off from the original drawings. So there's a, some exhibitions they've got on today. Yeah, that's so, right. yeah. so uh, he's pointed out a couple of things for us. Yeah. It's a good one there, isn't it? Yeah, so you can see the massive counterweight on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a good coat that, isn't it? Yeah, Got it that is. from Alien, didn't we? That one. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Good fit for us. Yeah. Well. Need a hat, no pot. So you got all sort of um, ramparts up there with cannons on them. So if you got this far over the drawbridge. 
confident, wouldn't you? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you would not be feeling confident if you got this far. Yeah. No, <laughs> be lucky fine. to be alive, yeah. I think, would be the expression. <laughs> it gave you no doubt who was in charge here, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Good grief. Yeah. I mean, it really was a castle of occupation, wasn't it? That's the principal gate. We've got England impaling Scotland in the first quarter, France in the second, Ireland in the third, and Hanover in the fourth. It's ironic that the arms of Scotland are wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't take Poppy in the museum, can we? No, no. That's the guard guard room, isn't it? Yeah. That bit's closed. I thought this was we're gonna check in or something, but looks very important, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit busy there, isn't it? So this is the guards room. Yeah, it? soldiers guards room. Yeah, didn't have much privacy, did they? No. Yeah. Right, so the bare patches on the wall of this room as a result of removal of loose and defective paint. I'm going to repaint that once to satisfy the walls are dry and free from the effect of salt crystallisation. Yeah, you can see it, can't you? Yeah. Twenty-four hours a day. So it provided accommodation for the sentries when not at their posts. The guard here is a Seaforth Highlander in the year 1883. They were on call for 24 hours, during which they undertook sentry duty, cleaned the guard room, fetched food from the cookhouse and looked after the equipment and clothing. Required to dress in full regimental uniform, even slept fully dressed in readiness. Well, this was obviously the parade ground. Normal drill was carried out on the barrack square beyond. It was just for ceremonial parades, really. Yeah, so I think the last time we came here, they had the cinema open, didn't they? The camp cinema here. <laughs> So the exhibition is closed, but you can download the Fort film or the Black Watch. Yeah. Yeah. So there's the perfect location. There we are. There. Okay. Now we're in a siege gun. Right. Okay. Thanks. Regimental pictures. So it was like Iraq. Afghanistan, bigger bone. Yeah. Ceremonial dress. <laughs> Chuck Norris was in the Highlanders, he would be in the clan. It's the multi terrain. Pattern uniform. <laughs> oh, that's a fancy picture. Francis 
is Lord Seaforth. Things from the Battle of Megas Fontaine in 1899, and the outbreak of the Boer War. Men of Valour. Victoria Cross. And that's the relief of look now. Ebony snuff box. Victoria Cross was formally introduced by Queen Victoria 29th of January. 29th of January? Oh yeah, 29th of January, 1856, thanks soldiers, sailors of all ranks are most conspicuous bravery or some daring preeminent act of valour or self-sacrifice. And it's the highest military decoration that can be given to a British or Commonwealth soldier. 1350 Victorian crosses have been awarded since 1856. Seaforth Highlanders was formed in 1881 by the amalgamation of two earlier regiments. Seaforth's Highlanders saw service across the globe, yet it was in India, the key to Britain's empire. They made their fighting reputation. This is a captured field gun following British victory at Ondeman, Ondeman, in 1898, uh, captured by the Sudanese forces of the Mahdi, following the defeat, the Egyptian force led by Colonel William Hicks at the Battle of Shekan. The gun is a seven-pounder. Bannockburn Challenge Shield, a shooting trophy. <laughs> That's quite something. A Highlander's kit, 1793. It's a return book of the 2nd Regiment North British Militia. Official record of the regiment's service includes enlistments, discharges and travel arrangements. Lovett Scouts was one of the most remarkable regiments in the British Army. Distinct distinct skill, uh, origins, skills and character have been a major influence on modern warfare. So it was really about guerrilla warfare. That people, they needed people who were skilled in reconnaissance and field craft who act, could act as scouts. Oh, that's the Lovett Scouts engine. See that? More of a gritty picture there. No Chapel. Hill 70. It's headquarters flag of the 7th Battalion. Highland Ca uh, Cameron Highlanders flown during the Battle of Luz. Saying the drummer Piers died along with 28 others when the Battalion HQ was which was located in a limestone cave, was hit by a German shell. That's 28 people then. 
worn by Private Jake Holder, Cameron Hyland, and badly wounded at Albers Ridge, 9th of May, 1915. As German propaganda removed from no man's land in Belgium by the Cameron Highlanders. Highlanders kit 1940. Into the Second World War now, obviously. Vehicle pennant taken from the German artillery commander at Le Havre. September 1944. I'm saying that the 51st Highland Division gained an almost legendary reputation in one of the British Army's elite battle formations drawn from Highland reg regiments. Division upheld tradition of Highland warrior and provided a potent symbol for Scotland in a global war. Obviously some of the things taken from victory in Europe 1945. German rifle cleaning kit there. Piece of Adolf Hitler's desk removed from the bunker by Lieutenant Colonel Richard Broad MC. Desk had been broken into pieces by Russian soldiers in May 1945. Japanese flag captured on the Kohima to Imphal Road by Cameron Highlanders in 1944. So there's the Middle East and North Africa and Sicily. Battle of Bulletin. A lot of these are obviously donated by people. This is Burma, Infal and Kohima. So many medals. The Liverpool Scottish Regiment. Formed in Liverpool in 1900, this volunteer unit was recruited from Scots living in the city and became part of the Territorial Force as a 10th Scottish Battalion. King's Liverpool Regiment, although a link had already existed with the Cameron Highlanders. Piping medals, so donated by the Inverness Class, part of the Cairngorm Gorm Group. Piping's always been cent central to high to regimental life, the role of the piper is a unique part of the Highland military tradition dating back to the clans. The power of pipe music to inspire and motivate Highland soldiers in battle has proved vital on many occasions, as has the bravery and sacrifice of individual pipers. An uncertain piece. <laughs> County for Manor. Aiden so a lot of uh, soldiers started coming home with uh, Britain's diminishing empire a changing army Sporting medals. So, in the late 1950s, plan for the future size and shape of the army led to a reduction in the number of infantry regiments. Seaforths and Camerons were one casualty of the process, and they were amalgamated into, to form the Queen's Own Highlanders. Your regiment had one regular battalion. Brunei, Borneo, and Sh Sharjah, an Iraqi assault rifle taken by the Queen's own Highlanders in the Gulf War. This Northern Ireland suit. Did eight tours in Northern Ireland. Okay. Two rifles and guns here. We've got a 
victorious British government set about taming the Highlands and dismantling the old clan system. But for the clan chiefs, there was still one way to help maintain their position and provide jobs for their clansmen, raise regiments of infantry. I think they are hugely loyal, loyal to their friend, loyal to their company, loyal to their town. It's down there, Popsy. Eh? Go down here. <laughs> Bit slippy there, Jen, watch it. Hey, what's in here? Probably says I'm out of the rain. Come here, Pops. Come out some way. One of the guns. Go on, Pop. Yeah, I don't think we'll be taking many scenic photos, eh, Pops? There's a gun missing here. See the van, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is the Prince of Wales Bastion. It says a raised area at the outermost corner of the bastion was long range was a long range battery. It's four heavy guns fired over the parapet and the outer defences towards enemies march along the peninsula and towards ships approaching from your right. There. Over there, on the far left, guns, five guns could fire through gaps in the parapets to protect to cover the ditch that protected the ravelin, the triangular stronghold below the rampart. Guns of Fort George are to our right are heavy guns, a 24 pounder from 1812 and a 32 pounder from 1829. The 13 inch mortar set back from the parapet could fire shells up to 1.6 miles. And the two lighter guns on the left are six pounders, one from 1797 and the other from 1800, both on loan from the Royal Armouries. The Highland troops were trained at Fort George for centuries, so lots of raw recruits have come here. Yeah, you can sort of see what they could have fired on, people crossing that bridge. I mean, it was certainly well designed, wasn't it? Yeah, I've had these little things. Well, the little uh, parapets. Poppy likes them because she was out of the rain. <laughs> yeah. you look out of the county box. Well, you can't. I can. All right, pops, we're coming. Come on, monkey. Yeah, just about to see the other shore. It says the graves of Bobby, Scotty, Jock and 23 other dogs lie in the place of arms just down there. Did you see it? Yeah. There's an epitaph on Jock's gravestone. It says, Old Jock lies here, his service over. The canteen beer he'll lap no more, nor here again the cook has door. So this is Prince Henry Frederick's Bastion from the inward side, facing side of the Bastion. Cannons could provide flanking fire along the rampart to halt an assault. A flanking fire there. So if we got over that there, we'd be facing fire from here. 
Yeah, it's a bit it's slippy. Go on, keep going. It's alright. You can't go anywhere. We've got the oh. walls to hang on to. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Black and white ones. <laughs> I don't mind a bit of bird watching. Is st uh, still Prince Henry's Henry Frederick's bastion, but basically what we're saying here is that they were obviously worried that the French who were going to invade were using their ironclad steamships with rifled cannons, and uh, they upgraded a lot of the guns to heavier guns here. So obviously you've got a turntable there. But the interesting thing was they were saying that at the same time whilst they were doing this in eight, 1860s. In 1865, during the American Civil War, a squadron of Union ironclad gunships bombarded the uh, Confederate stronghold Fort Fisher in North Carolina. It says the power and accuracy of the latest naval guns swept the ramparts clean of cannons and defenders, paving the way for a successful ground attack. So, Fort Fisher was obviously very similar to this sort of fort, you know, which they thought was impregnable. Yeah. So they soon found out that it wasn't. It wasn't. How warfare changed. Yeah. So it, <laughs> you think about it, this is probably one of the last castles, really, isn't it? Mm, yeah, yeah. They call it a fort, but. George II's fourth grandson. Yeah. Henry yeah, so this is the th three guns of the coastal battery installed 1860 destroyed the four original central gun embrasures. Beside the gun mountains are expense magazines and shot and shell recesses. Behind you, enclosed by the bastion, were the garrison workshops. Yeah, so you can see how much bigger the guns had got. Yeah, so here's the garrison chapel. Careful there, Pops. Sudden drop there, Pops. Don't go down there. Be careful. So I don't think we've ever... Have we walked up this far? I think... I do remember that chapel. Yeah, I don't think we've ever been in it, so... I'm running low on um, space on my memory card. Yes, yeah, so this is a regimental chapel of the Seaforth Highlanders and the Queen's Own Highlanders, Seaforths and the Camerons. Up here, just a minute. So here we are, inside the chapel. Yeah. <laughs> like a balcony above. For those of us who are interested in Land Rovers, they've actually got some different vehicles here now, haven't they? I forget what these things are called. P 
Pins, Pinsgowers, that's it, they're Austrian. Assume that's what they're replacing the Land Rovers with. Yeah, that's it for a little visit to Fort George. No, it's good. Sun's just starting to break. Yeah, and it's Come out now. now. Yeah. And it stopped raining. Yeah. It's a pity we couldn't visit it when the weather was a bit better. But uh, we're getting hungry now. Yeah, we are. Still wet and cold. But we've got a more time to go back to, so. Yep. Can't we, Fort? Yeah. So, anyway, enjoy the video. Give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notifications icon and you'll get an update and release another video. So I will catch up with you soon.